super. Thanks. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Mick. Um, yeah, so Cycle South Dublin, is it wanted? Can it happen? <laughs> it's a very ambitious plan, as Mick outlined. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about, well, yeah, these kind of the subtitles here, is it wanted and can it happen? Um, on the in order to answer, is it wanted? I'll, I'll refer back to the bike life study, uh, which was a huge, huge study we did uh, in 2019 on the Dublin metropolitan area. So there's the Dublin metropolitan area extending from Donabay to Kilcock to Greystones. Obviously, Tala is the most important part of that, South Dublin. <laughs> but um, and it was a, a big survey, lots and lots of data collected, including the kind of key part of it was the door to door interviews that are demographically representative and independent of over a thousand Dubliners and, and 208 interviews in South Dublin County Council. Um, and just note as I'm kind of going through this that it was pre COVID and I'll be I'll be drawing out the kind of changes post COVID. Um, and the key stats there, and I think Mick alluded to them earlier, was that 24% of adults in the greater in the Dublin metropolitan area cycle at least once a week. And this was actually surprising even to uh, those of us who are working in the NTA because we don't, the census only asks really, um, you know, work and, work and uh, education trips, other types other types of, of surveys we've done have just been like percentage of the trips that you do. but. In terms of are you ever on a bike, at least a quarter of Dubliners are on a bike at least once a week, which is very high. Um, and that was 13% in South Dublin. 11% um, are very regular cycler, cycle, cyclists, five days a week or more. That's 4% in South Dublin. So that's what you saw there from a mixed presentation. Um, and 21% of people don't cycle but would like to start. So that's kind of where we're at. Like that's what we're focusing on. That's our potential market. Um, and just to say 54% of people that do cycle would like to cycle more as well. So there's a, there's a lot of a lot of potential there when you're thinking about is it going to work or is it wanted? Um, in terms of the reasons for not cycling, uh, the majority is, you know, the main reason is con concern about safety, which is something that we can address, which is great. Uh, not confident cycling and not for people like me are somewhat when we drill into it related to safety, related to how people feel their own capacities are. Um, um, and poor weather, as Mick said, um, it's there as a reason for sure. Um, it doesn't put people off in the Netherlands or in uh, in, in Denmark that much. Uh, so what would help people cycle more? More Well, overwhelmingly what people want is protected cycle infrastructure. So that's sep either greenways completely separated from traffic or separated from traffic and pedestrians by curbs. And so here is a picture of um, uh, the the coastal mobility route in, in Dunleary. So it's great that we actually have lots of um, lots of photos now of different types of people that are cycling in Ireland for a while. When you thought about cyclists, maybe the picture that came to, he to mind was a male with, the, you know, from 20 to 40, maybe high vis, maybe maybe expensive bike bikes um, and kind of just belting it as much as they could. Um, whereas what we're aiming for and what you're seeing here is that latent demand is released is children, is women, uh, different age groups, different types of bikes. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's great to see. So. Yeah, most people would say have said, and these. The, by the way, this this survey I should have said is it, you know it was door to door, def, demographically representative. It wasn't just asking cyclists. It was, it was kind of a vox pop, um, of the of of Dubliners in general. So seventy seven percent of South Dublin residents would find more cycle tracks, um, like these protected ones, useful to help them cycle more. And even more than that, 94%, so South Dublin residents top the poll on this one, would support building more protected on-road cycle tracks, even when this would mean less room for other traffic. So there's a huge um, mandate there for building cycle, at least at a general level, and I'll come back to that later. <laughs> I mean, we all know, you know, when it gets to a street level, there can be difficulties, but at a general level, South Dubliners really those in from St Dublin County Council really support the building of these even when it takes room away from from traffic. Um, yeah look in general cycling in Dublin is still fairly male and um, in terms of ethnicity it's across you know it's it's even that you know it there might be it's of those regular cycles there's as many from ethnic minority groups as of as white people and um, 
it's mainly male and it's kind of still young focused. Um, as you can see on the age profile, it really drops off when you're looking at ages over 56. Um, but encouragingly, 40% of people aged 16 to 25 cycle at least once a week. So, um, and this, uh, interestingly, this kind of profile is not set in stone. It's not a, it's not a biological imperative um, because 55% of all cycling trips in the Netherlands are by women. And in the Netherlands, um, those over 65 make as many trips as those, as those actually higher. They, they make more trips than any other age group over 26. So um, this is a big one, I think, for South Dublin County Council. What we found was that in this in this survey, those who are least likely, those who are, are do not have a car available in their household are also the least likely to cycle or to want to cycle. And there's a feeling there when we're drilling into the data that um, they don't feel like they are cyclists, that they're not confident cyclists and they're not for pe it's not for people like me. So we were seeing that being a cyclist is associated sometimes with a certain type of person or characteristics. Um, again, maybe that um, male, middle aged and maybe there's a middle class kind of thing there as well. That's that that's in people's heads. Um, and we can see here what can be accessed in 25 minutes. So, so quite a lot of Dublin is accessible and um, we do. We know we, we know we have an issue with sprawl. We know we know we're not the most compact of cities, but quite a lot of Dublin is accessible. He can do 26 uh, kilometres in pretty relaxed pace in 25 minutes and e-bikes are extending the range and they're getting ever more uh, popular. This is just, you know, kind of boring stuff, but actually I find it really interesting. Big socioeconomic or big uh, economic model behind this. And we found that um, for every kilometre cycled instead of driven, uh, there's a benefit of a euro for individuals and the society. So, you know, multiply all of those um, trips that are being made every day by a euro and, and it's coming back to us uh, uh, manifold. And that, that this includes you know, sometimes um, things that don't favour cycling, like value of time and 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 uh, uh, taxes foregone and stuff like that. Um, as Mick said, transport accounts for twenty percent of our greenhouse gas emissions, and it's and it's the 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 um, the sector that's increasing the most. Um, so. Yeah, uh, it, we're probably down on it in twenty twenty, but you know things things could go back pretty quickly. There are myriad health benefits of cycling and um, prevents long term diseases. The top disease it prevents, I couldn't believe it when I found is depression um, I, you know, physical activity really helps in depression. It's the first probably uh, prescribed. Uh, um, yeah, the first thing prescribed when people are mental health are, is suffering dementia, coronary heart disease um, and air quality. So we're all very used to you know, epidemiology is part of our lives now, but when air quality, uh, bad air quality is, it costs 1,100 early adult deaths um, in Ireland every year. And this one I'd like to highlight, it didn't come through in the report, but one in five or one in four, depending on which report you you read, Irish children are obese um, and daily exercise is ideally placed to combat obesity. In fact, it's the number one um, uh, remedy for obesity um, by the experts. So obviously an active travel, an active travel commute to school there and back is huge. And it's great to see that again, we can use Irish pictures for so many years. I put these presentations together and I'd have a mix maybe of Irish pictures. All, all of them here are, 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 are Dublin pictures actually. So there's some kids in Kerrysford Avenue and Black Rock cycling on their new cycle facility that just uh, went in over the summer. Um, and yeah, so back to our kind of key points, do people want it? Well, yeah, they do. Um, in our survey, we found that Dubliners overwhelmingly want want extra sp this, uh, public spends, uh, public exchequer spends on cycling. And in fact, I don't know if I mentioned that at the start because I'm kind of rushing through to get to lots of juicy info, but um, this survey it was replicated across 14 different UK cities. And this was, I think Dublin was the only place where cycling was where was like cycling was the place where people wanted most um the most spend so usually it was public transport but in dublin it's cycling public transport very a very close second there and then walking 
And 35% feel at, at a general level that the government should be spending more on driving, but that's a whole lot of people that don't feel that way. Alrighty, um, no, I'm just going to skip that one. <laughs> so if that mandate is so strong, why aren't we out doing it? Because um, it's that easy, right? Um, it's not, as du South Dublin County Council um, and if any of the elected representatives are are tuned in or or their campaigns, you'll you know you've 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 been at the coal face. You've there's been protests. There's been definitely um uh, yeah it's these you know that these projects aren't that easy because if we're taking space uh, from traditionally what is there for cars for walking and cycling projects or we're changing junction signals to give walking and cycling a bit more time. You know, it's change and change is hard. Um, so walking and cycling projects, I always say, are change management projects. They're with a, with a slice of infrastructure and engineering, but mainly cultural projects. Uh, uh, and then there's many wedges that are needed to change travel culture, such as trials and temporary infrastructure, which South Dublin are doing now on Wellington Road. Good communication, early community engagement, which I know Mick is really big on, and which this this whole engagement of Cycle South Dublin and, and this webinar is part of, um, and making things look attractive uh, uh, and working with schools. Um, so yeah, these are some of the top tips on how to how to get infrastructure in. Um, oh yeah, there's our cycle. It's not a great photo, but it there it's Wellington Lane and the pop up cycle protected cycle facilities protected by bollards there, and. If they build it, will they come? Yes, they will. And um, we found in Willsbrook Road in Luke, and when we put in segregated protected cycle infrastructure, there was a big increase in cycling and a big increase in pedestrians. And, and the Tala scheme, that the lovely cycle track there between Tala and Temple Oak, big increase in cyclists, big increase in pedestrians. And everyone always hears about um, the Netherlands and in Copenhagen, but it's interesting to maybe think about in another type of city like Seville grew their bike network from 12 kilometres in 2006 to 151 kilometres in 2013 and cycle trips um, more than uh, quadrupled. So people have said they will cycle if if there's protected cycle infrastructure and it's been shown that when you, when it's given they will cycle. Um, and that, that graph kind of is a little bit of an anomaly here, but I did want to say there's a huge kind of latent demand over and over every study we do, and these, this study included nearly 5,000 uh, pupils. P children re really want to cycle. That's their preferred mode of transport. They don't really want to walk <laughs> and they don't want to be driven. Their, prefer their overwhelmingly preferred mode of transport is to cycle. Um, and is the money there? So can it be done? Well, the programme for government seeks a fundamental change in the nature of transport in Ireland. There's a target spend of, and it's been cited well, and at me every day, spend a million a day, Fanola. Uh, I'm happy to do so. Um, 360 million per year, adding to about 1.8 billion over five years to enable that full step change in how we travel. Um, and what would, what's needed, you know, that's the, that's the high level commitment and the, and the money behind it then we need a plan for each county and resources to implement that plan. And that's where South Dublin are streams ahead at the moment. They've taken, they've taken, this is what South Cycle South Dublin is doing. It's 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 laying out the plan. Um, is cycling culture a reality? Well, we know that lots of people want to start cycling. 21% uh, want to cycle, 54% want to cycle more. We know from COVID, from a big study that Cycling Ireland did, about 5,000 people, that cycling as, as a pastime has almost doubled during uh, COVID. So, you know, you've heard it from your fa family and friends and stuff, everyone's trying their bikes again. Many of the, and Cycle South Dublin, the document is great on these stats, like how many of our, our, our short trips, like less than one kilometre, less than two kilometres are by car. That's a huge cohort that could, could be tapped into. As I said, children overly, overwhelmingly want to cycle and protected infrastructure shows that you can bring out new cyclists and funding is available. Um, there will be challenges, all right, and 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 as we know, we've been through them in terms of, of road space reallocation and making changes, um, and the priority that that motorised traffic might have had. But I I think our mantra in in Cycle South Dublin and in the NTA is well, we want to be moving to better problems. Like I'm happy if we're moving to 
you know, problems of cycle, cycle congestion or where we're going to put our cycle parking at schools, all of that sort of stuff is better problems. And even even the problems that we'll be addressing at junctions, you know, they're going to be better problems because we'll be moving more people and in, in more sustainable ways. All of that, that was kind of a, 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 a bevy of facts there, but I just wanted to, I kind of hate um, anecdotal stories, like, but I thought it might well as well just kind of end with uh, one that might illustrate some of the changes that are, uh, uh, that, that can happen. There's my mum, she's 73 years old. She bought a bike two, two months ago. because She's kind of sick of walking around the same streets during COVID. Um, she hadn't been on a bike in 30 years. She lives right on the border of South Dublin, South, uh, South Dublin and um, Dublin City Council. And she's yeah exploring the roads of Green Hills and she's keeping off the main roads at the moment. She's still working her way up to, to, to the main roads, but she's doing trips that she would have done by car all the time. She's not, by the way, the greenest, you know, she's not a green advocate or, <laughs> or particularly fit. She's, she loves the car and she's a smoker, <laughs> but she's now a 73 year old woman who will, who will cycle around, uh, cycle to mass, cycle to, to her local shops. Um, and I thought, well, you know, that does, that just is just a kind of illustration of change uh, in the flesh. So there you go. That's that's, That's fantastic, Fenella. <laughs> I love that picture of your mum at the end. It's wonderful. <laughs>